Hi, everybody. It is Wednesday, February 3rd. Uh, this is the WG Cates Infra bi weekly meeting. Uh, I am your host, Aaron Krickenberger, or Aaron of Sig Beard, or Spiff XP on all the places. Uh, this meeting is being publicly recorded, so we can all go to YouTube later and watch ourselves adhere to the Kubernetes code of conduct by being our very best selves. If you have any issues with the conduct of this meeting, please email contact at kubernetes.io, or you are welcome to reach out to me privately. Um, so I put a few things on the agenda. And like I said, if there's other stuff people want to talk about, we can totally do that. Um, first up, uh, let's do our, uh, let's see, I'm supposed to welcome new members. I recognize you all. Uh, next up, billing review. Let's take a look at the Data Studio report and let's see if we can't compare that to uh, what Tim gets to see on the internal billing page. And let's see if there are any surprises or things that look unusual to us. So I'll share my screen so we can see the billing report. About 120K over the last 28 days. I'm still, lo I'm still loading. We got Jan 6 to Feb 2. Let's take the exact same range. Jan 6 to Feb 2. I show 115. So at this scale, that's pretty close to within the noise. Yeah, that seems pretty good to me. Um, I, I don't know. I don't have anything I specifically care to talk about with regard to our current spend. It looks predictable to me. Yeah, I don't, I, there's nothing that's obviously low hanging fruit to go on and optimize for. And we're not really at that stage of optimization anyway. Nothing seems out of line to me. It's where I expected it to go. Yeah. And we're within spitting distance of each other. That's really my, my main check-in that I want to keep on. Yep, I agree. Uh, can I suggest um, that we check slide six, which is the month over month like comparison? Although it looks like it doesn't work very well on the first of the month or second of the month. But that that's supposed to be the one that uh, is a good one to keep an eye on. Okay. Although I probably need to fix it. <laughs> well, uh, maybe, but also this is not surprising. Uh, uh, oh, maybe this is, yeah, comparing the first days to the previous month. It's not surprising because I expect I would see a jump from uh, holiday levels of activity. Or like January 1st and January 2nd were very slow if it's just comparing those days. If I look at the the two month graph on the GCP console, it's pretty, pretty predictable weekly cycles um, with a significant dip between the 23rd and the 3rd of January, surprise. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it is very gently up and to the right. Yeah. Um, I can show something similar if I take our start date and move it back to like, trigger ends, let's do November 1st. Uh, the, the trend I would expect to see is maybe some kind of peak running up to release and then a massive dip because of holiday stuff and then a start of rise again. And that is effectively uh, what I'm seeing here. So like the real large spike in compute engine to me is a real large spike in CI related costs. Possibly, I would go dig into projects and look at our service usage by uh, SKU to actually going on. But this is predictable enough at the moment that I don't think we have to. Just on that, like I, uh... I'm not sure what it was showing, but I pulled up like versus the previous month, uh, and it did show like moderate growth, uh, with the exception of uh, container registry vulnerability scan scanning, which doubled to $2,800. So not huge, but like that's not unexpected, and that's all in the Kate staging CI images. So that's I guess what we would expect. The thing which uh, is likely to become more of a problem is uh, it looks like there are a larger number of Kate's Infra EDE Boscos scale dash number number uh, projects, and we're not aggregating those currently. So that might come into the, I saw there was a later topic about project granularity. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, okay, I will stop sharing my screen for now.
Um, thank you all for walking through that. Uh, is there any AIs from the last meeting that we needed to review? Um, I guess, first, does anybody have anything off the top of their heads? No, okay, scanning through, I know, Ricardo, you were talking about sort of cert manager and monitoring related stuff. You wanna give us an update on where you're at with that stuff? Sure, yeah, I actually, I got no updates because I've got like cr crowded with a lot of things from my day job. I've reached to James again, so he, he can at, at least review my, my PR of cert manager update because I think we are pretty, behind the stable version also the apis from the objects they are pretty behind so i put some readme and I, I did almost everything but I, I still need that james to to review the pr and also to to update the cert manager from the cluster and uh about the the, the cert manager monitoring i've i've made up a, a first call that i've sent you justin but i know that he's like crowded also with day jobs things and yeah. that's a, a really a really start version and I'm probably going to, to to work on that this this weekend. Now that I have my other Kubernetes PRs that were on on the front of the queue, we got merged. Thank you, team, for the end port merged. So now I can I can work with the with this with the cert manager monitoring. Also, I want to take a look into the 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 Google Cloud features to see if we can have like two 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 kinds of of monitoring. One of them doing with the cert manager with, with, with the cert monitoring thing like inside this program that that can monitor monitor the crds and the other one at least taking a look into if 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 google cloud can collect the prometheus metrics from them from from cert manager and we can compare if if which one is better for us like having google cloud alerting us co collecting the metrics from cert manager and alert, alerting us or or having like the program that that can fetch all the CRDs and then and then also trigger a, an alert in Slack or anything else. So I'm gonna probably create an account and and, and try do some some stuff like that. That sounds great. Um, yeah, the cert manager upgrades can be fun. I'm very happy that runners and the maintainers of that project put as much documentation as they have into upgrading from the different resource versions. Um, and yes, I'm pretty sure Google Cloud can ingest uh, Prometheus metrics. Um, you, I'm, I'm not sure where he's at these days, uh, but Bart Smikla was working on some kind of integration between Google Cloud monitoring and some Prometheus metrics that were on the cluster. Um, so if he's not able to get you up to speed um let me know and i will do my best with the bandwidth that i have available uh being getting acquainted with cloud monitoring is still uh, a learning curve for me but uh i'm getting better at it i'd really like on that note like i'd really like to see us get to a point of actually doing file driven uh configuration changes to logging, monitoring, and alerts type stuff. Uh, right now, I seem to be at the point where I'm clicking around in the console. Um, so I've got an open issue uh, tagged as help wanted that describes, I'm pretty sure, of what needs to be done for at least different monitoring dashboards. I'm assuming it's very similar for setting up alerting rules. At some point in the fairly distant past, some of the things that I wanted to do around setting up the alerts with the Slack channel uh, weren't command line capable yet. Uh, now, my understanding is that a lot of work has gone into that. Um, I haven't looked at it since we set that up, what, a year and a half or two years ago. OK. Um, yeah, maybe we could make an issue to reinvestigate. You're talking like Google Cloud monitoring integration with Slack as an alert. Well, we have it now. You can get there through through click ops. There I, last I looked there wasn't a command line equivalent for okay. the, you know, click here at a Slack bot, etc. Yeah. Okay. Um. But we have a nice Kate's alerts channel which will which we can occasionally get messages on. 
I think I, I might that. be in it. Yes, it's very quiet. And usually when alerts fire, they're related to the container image promoter stuff, and I don't really understand. Yeah, there's a there's a known issue in the promoter uh, around like having a lot of updates at the same time when it hits quota limits and backs off and then just starts getting into sort of a death spiral. Um, the the last time we saw alerts, I think was was that, and I just silenced yeah. them. Yeah, nothing since August. That's cool. um, but but as Stephen is looking at some of the promoter stuff, I, I told him when he's when he feels like Sig release has ownership of the promoter bot to let me know, and we'll do this uh, sneaky container image test again, and I'll push something dirty up there and see if he can find it. Yeah, uh, game day sounds good. Um. Okay, uh, yeah, so uh, moving on to the agenda items, I added the first one thing I wanted to talk about was just kind of a, a couple specific questions about how we're organizing our projects for the purposes of billing. Um, so I had two specific requests. Maybe I'll add Justin's thing about the Bosco's projects as well. Uh, Aaron, do, do you want me to take over the notes again? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I'm writing a note for myself to remember to talk about it. So, yeah, no problem. Um, so at the moment, my impression is that uh, if I look at the billing just for Kate's artifacts prod, that's basically the cost of hosting upstream project artifacts. Right. That's pretty handy. At the moment, that's just container images um so it's actually not right there's gcs there that is cops stuff which is, is difficult there. to extract yes now once we turn on the logs we can actually get a better picture of who's pulling what and and some level of attribution mm -hmm. but that's going to be a little bit diy so uh, i uh, just to, to jump the gun on your question like perhaps we ought to, instead of having one Kate's artifacts bucket, we ought to have a project per goal uh, so that we can see it trivially in a report like the regular reports. Is that the part of the question? It, it is, but I was actually going to go the other way. I feel like we're really close to having all of our artifacts, upstream artifact hosting costs lumped into this one project, including GCS buckets for things that uh, are serving raw binaries. So I still feel like we need to sort out the binary promotion process maybe. Uh, but so I was thinking when we talked about doing, uh, trying to flip dl.kates.io away from the google.com bucket Kubernetes release and towards a Kates infra bucket, I was proposing we do a Kates infra bucket in the Kates artifacts prod project. Uh, but I wanted the sanity to check that given that like, I don't know if we want to try and make uh, treat Kate's artifacts prod like no human should ever be creating or touching any buckets in there. We shouldn't we have artifact promotion or if it's cool if I create like a Kate's release bucket and dump all the <clears throat> Kubernetes release artifacts. So why not both? Uh, I, I like the goal, I very much like the goal. In fact, it is exactly what I was hoping for at the beginning, which is no human ever touches Kate's artifacts prod, except in very rare exceptional cases. Um, why does the release process not need to go through some promoter? Why shouldn't the release process push to a temporary place and have a Git manifest that says, this is the thing, this is the hash, this person signed off on it, move it into production, and now we have a, the, the, a more auditable back. I think it should. My my only question here is I don't I don't think we have that today. Maybe just Justin, maybe you can answer that since you just apparently are doing this for cops. Maybe. Uh, yeah, and that's oh. Tim's going to sorry. Yes, uh, the uh, we do have it. Uh, it's not automated promotion, but you will occasionally see PR spam where so like the the chaos uh, binary builds go built by cloud build uh, into a staging bucket. Uh, I create a manifest. I, as the prom person doing the promotion, create a manifest, or whoever's doing the release creates a manifest. PRs that to the infra repo, 
Um, and eventually that will be done when it's merged, it will happen automatically. Right now, the, the promotion of that happens. I manually run the binary that would otherwise be run. Okay. The promoter binary, but we have that. And actually, uh, SIG release moved that promoter binary into their own, uh, uh, into their own, like into the release, uh, get repo, I guess. Okay. And Cops is still pushing to a subfolder of the Kate's artifacts prod bucket, right? Correct. Um, and moreover, uh, there is a um, there's a layer of abstraction in front, so it it almost doesn't matter. Uh, we have a, a GCLB which has a subpath. I should not remember the subpath, but anyway, there's a there's a subdirectory, and then there's Cops, and so uh, we can we can establish almost any structure underneath. Uh, that GCLB we want to, and without well, changing any visible URLs. The the reason I ask uh, is because for for context, uh, I'm looking at the console now. We have aside from the GCR backed buckets, we have one, two, three, four, five, six other buckets like artifact CNI, artifact CRI tools, artifact CSI, artifacts oh, that's for logs. Never mind. Artifacts kind. Artifacts vulnerability dashboard. Um, and at some point, we made a call to make separate buckets for these things because we can only ACL buckets, not subdirectories of buckets. Um, and as long as humans were doing the work, we had to put them in separate buckets. Now, when I look at the billing report, let's see if I can uh, choose project uh, artifacts prod. I can't, as far as I can tell, I can't find a way to break it down further than the project, right? And what we really want is at minimum a per bucket cost. Correct. If we if we take the logs, uh, we can get an estimate. We can like say per per URL, uh, how many downloads, how many bytes. Uh, I don't think we can say like the difference between like I think. Pack bandwidth is more expensive than US bandwidth. And like, so I don't think we can do that, but we can at least get a first order indication. Right. So, uh, Aaron, the, the question is do we feel like we should invest in doing that more, uh, more precisely? Or should we go the other direction and just say, look, one bucket, one project, and then billing is really easy? The GCLB. We'd have to. We'd, we might need to do G different GCLBs for that. I don't know. I kind uh, of idea of maybe each individual sub project or SIG or whatever getting their staging project for them to do their stuff, the hosting their artifacts or whatever. But I like the idea of promoting them to the one central project for the supercharged upstream hosting that Kate's Infra provides. And the GCLB that Aaron uh, that uh, Justin just raised is a good point. I don't think you can set it up to a backend bucket in a different project. I suspect you might be able to do that, but I don't think the billing would do what you want it to do. Like the the bandwidth, because like storage, fine, but the bandwidth charges, I presume, would go into the central GCLB project. Uh, oh. No idea. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if you can set up the back end properly. Um, I think this is an area that we should, like, we're just going to have to try a few different things and, and see how things turn out, right? Okay. I feel like the first thing I'm taking away from this is I need to follow up Justin and the release engineering team to see if it's, if I can sort of get it on their roadmap to put together the binary artifact motion process for this quarter, or if we can at least document the state of how it's manually done today. Because I know they're still kind of working with polish and maybe move the artifact promotion stuff for widget uh, quarter, so they might have a lot going on. Uh, secondly, I feel like I will talk to them about uh, for, the, for trialing dl.kates.io, I think we should still have the bucket that hosts that living Kates artifacts prod. Uh, 
unless you think I should have it live elsewhere. Because I feel like we'll see that that we'll when we start incurring costs from uh, redirecting traffic back, I'm pretty sure we'll see the delta. And we'll oh, that... absolutely, we will see that delta. Right. Um, and so we'll have a one time like this is how much it cost us in the first month based on the the uh, slope change of that graph. Um, but we won't over time be able to, to tease those apart unless we process the logs ourselves, which to be fair, you know, hippies starting to look at so right um i created an issue about how we would do the dl kate's io stuff i don't know if you want to walk through it this meeting review it offline or just trust that i'll sort it out with uh mm -hmm. engineering folks but uh, i'm i'm happy to let you uh drive it the biggest issue is just making sure that the content is synced to both places in in my opinion yes i agree um yep all right, I'll work through that with Augustus. I, it looks to me like we it would be a good idea to start with at least leveraging Google Cloud STS, and then we can see if there's something else we need to do that's more fine-grained or more frequent for more recurring stuff. Uh, getting the frequency of syncing from different buckets is going to be way more important for CI builds, which are updated very frequently. Releases are kind of a known event that happen at a human manageable cadence. So if it has to be synced uh, by humans for now, that's okay. But we're using this to iterate towards an automated syncing solution. Um, okay, next thing. Uh, I've been trying to <clears throat> I've been trying to look a little bit more into uh, empowering the community to run uh, queries against BigQuery. Um, this comes. This is motivated by. Uh, uh, Grant McCloskey, a member of my team, a member of SIG testing, has been trying to work on taking a lot of the test metrics that we collect um, for all the jobs that run on Prow, uh, store them into a BigQuery database, and then show them in a data studio report. Not unlike how okay, the Kate's Infrared uh, AAA cluster like sends all of its billing data to a BigQuery database, and then we use Data Studio to run queries against BigQuery, and then the public can see those results. Um, the catch is, I don't actually know where, so if I look at the billing report right now, I don't actually know where the BigQuery usage to generate the billing report is billed to. I would like to get to a point where for just reporting stuff in general, either for the help of the project or for the billing of our infra or whatever, we bill all that stuff to one central project. And ideally, we do that in a way where like the public can run queries against BigQuery and have it go to that project, or at least like a trusted group of the public, like the CI signal team or whatever. If they want to try putting together their own queries or building their own dashboards, I want to empower them to do that without feeling scared that they're going to be running up charges on their own personal accounts to run BigQuery stuff. Um, does that make sense? Yes, I'm pretty sure that the cost of a BigQuery run is to the account, the, the, to the project. We don't build accounts, we build projects, right? For the most part. So it would go to the project hosting the BigQuery data. No. No? No. Uh, so there, there is such a thing as like a publicly available BigQuery data set, like the GitHub. Uh, GitHub, you can go uh, take a look at a BigQuery data set that has all the GitHub events for the past years. Um, but if I want to run a query against that, I need to give a project to build the compute usage to. Um, so it doesn't get charged to whatever project is hosting the GitHub data set. It gets charged to, at the moment, my free tier personal Google Cloud account, which like, as long as I don't use more than a terabyte's worth of uh, query, I, I never get charged for it, uh, which is cool. Um, but basically, like I've been trying to do some reading on uh, here. I guess I'll share 
screen. I have this issue linked in the meeting notes, but I'm trying to figure out like how to make community accessible data studio reports. So the community should be able to like trusted members of the community should be able to edit Justin's billing report and trusted members of the community should be able to create CI signal reports. Uh, but data studio is kind of weird. It's not like a G cloud thing that's homed in a project the way all of our other infrastructure is. It seems kind of tied to, to G Suite. Um, so mm. if uh, any of my fellow coworkers happen to make data studio stuff uh, using their google.com accounts, it gets tied to the google.com G Suite, which prevents public access. You can tie it to like anybody within the G Suite org. You can tie it to a public Google group, but you can't tie it to all users. If for whatever reason we wanted to provide a no login dashboard. That's one thing. Um, second thing is the projects that get billed for BigQuery usage in Data Studio reports are something you set up at the data source level. Uh, uh, and then it's slightly, and then I think you have to like grant people access to view the data from the data source as well. So like viewing a Data Studio report does not necessarily mean you have access to view all of the data from all of the data sources inside of that report. Um, long story short, basically I'm, I would like to get somebody, most likely my team member, somebody from CI Signal to go tell us like how they need it set up so that they can do Data Studio and BigQuery goodness in Kate's Infra and we can put the bill in a reasonable way for that. But I want some agreement on what project we should use for charging the BigQuery usage. And if we so, this for the billing report, I think we could start by asking like, how is, could, we, could we maybe pick up that task of taking the billing report thing and making it more community uh, accessible? So we currently stake, take all of the org level billing and send it to the Kubernetes public project. Right, and that's where the, the 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 billing dump of BigQuery goes. Yeah. Uh, more of a question than an answer for you. Um, how, like, what is the order of magnitude number of data sets that we think we will end up with, and do we want them all in one project, which is easy for people to consume, but maybe more difficult for management, or do we want them in different projects? Um, and I've not personally played very deeply with the um, access control for different data sets. Some of these data sets are inevitably going to end up with PII, right? This is the ongoing discussion with uh, CNCF. So we will need to figure out what does and doesn't have PII and govern them possibly differently. Uh, Justin, you had a hand up. Uh, yeah, I was just gonna say like, I think what you said is true about uh, how the permissions work. We one thing I think we can, there are two models for sharing a BigQuery data set. Uh, we can, we can make it public, uh, which is the, where people sort of fork it or clone it, and then it's charged to your own, or we can, um, I think just grant specific people or groups access, in which case I believe it would be built to Kubernetes public or whatever we chose to like, you know, the, the host project. Uh, it looks like, uh, you, I think you're right also about how Data Studio works. I think we could certainly share the um, Data Studio reports themselves uh, so that people could like put them on their own uh, G Suite accounts. Um, but uh, there's not a nice, as far as I know, there's no like underlying like YAML representation that enables us to put them on GitHub, which I think we want, we were like hoping for before. Um, yes. As I understand it, Data Studio is essentially a UI, um, and so it could be that, like, we could, if we make the BigQuery uh, endpoints accessible, someone could, for example, like use Observable, which I hear is like the the GitHub of data or whatever, uh, to like um, like create their own sort of reports and share those sorts of things. Yeah. So I also want to empower <clears throat> both things. Um, I want the data to be like today, all the, the proud build data is publicly accessible, even though it was in a google.com, it was in the gubernator project. Uh, 
is still around. Um, so like I want uh, that type of data, build data to still be publicly accessible for people to use whatever they choose to run queries against it. Like I'm fine if we hook it up to Grafana again. The issue we had in the past was when we were using Grafana to display the results of queries against that, uh, <laughs> we kept getting hacker one. Like too many people were finding vulnerabilities in our Grafana. Uh, deployment. And so uh, we don't necessarily think we would have that problem uh, with data student if we were to go that route. But if anybody else wants to set up anything that queries this thing, that sounds great. I still think but, that to what is the project that we would allow to be filled for running? Well, so this, this is the question. Should we absorb the bill for Joe random user who wants to query our data set or should we do like github and say it's available but you know you have to pay for the queries yourself and if you want funded queries come and talk to this group i want the last option i don't want to allow so there might be some cases where i want joe random user to see reports that we generate which may okay. be generated using stuff the big query i understood want as a group of contributors to be able to run arbitrary queries to help them develop and iterate on more useful dashboards for them and the rest of the community. And then I want a really trusted group of individuals to have access to PII according to what the CNCF uh, mandates. Okay. That's and so the question then is where to, where to host all that data? Uh, it, yeah, it could be both where to host it and where to bill it. Hosting it seems maybe slightly, hosting it, you would get the cost of like ingesting the data, I guess. But most of the bandwidth for things like BigQuery, or sorry, most of the billing for BigQuery is going to be the compute usage to run queries. Um, uh, uh, is there a reason to have them, those two things be different answers? If we just want to understand the TCO of exposing a, a set of data, probably, probably in, in yeah. Okay. So let me back up and ask maybe a related question that maybe I was trying to ask. I feel like the Kubernetes public project is supposed to be like our public facing uh, artifacts project. Um, so if I have anything that I want for broader community consumption, I should put it there. Um, but like, if we don't so much care about that and we feel like we've gotten our relationship with Google Cloud to the point where projects are like candy, I'm totally fine creating as many one-off purpose-built projects as we need to like appropriately segment the billing for all this stuff. That then leads to the next conversation uh, where like, we already have a bunch of segments of projects for E2E tests, um, but we don't have a really quick and easy way to aggregate the billing for all of that. So I think we're going to want to look at uh, improving the billing report or providing ways to like aggregate or roll up a bunch of related projects. Um, and yeah. So and, I don't know the answer to the question. I, I think the Kubernetes public project at this point, the naming of it is a historical artifact more than a uh, mission. Okay. Uh, I, I also just looked into like the query, the permissions that are available on BigQuery. Um, so we can share uh, the whole thing with a, with a group or individuals to different levels, like read-only access. In addition, uh, we, can sh we can create authorized views. So if we wanted to create, I wouldn't open that right now. Uh, you're sharing your screen, Aaron, by the way. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Okay, cool. Uh, the, um, if you want, sorry, if you want to create authorized views, uh, so if we wanted, if there was a table that had PII in it, for example, uh, we could like aggregate it down to something which the CNCF says is appropriate and then share that view with certain people, like a group. Okay. That's cool. Yeah, I was just trying to demonstrate like I'm logged in with my personal cloud account doesn't bill anything and I can totally see the, the current Kubernetes uh, 
anyway, so Tim, you were like, Kubernetes public is an artifact. Uh, should I just go create whatever random project names I want to host whatever I want? Uh, I, I The question I have is, do we want one project or small n projects or big n projects? I don't, I don't know the answer. It, uh, it's related to the overhead and friction of managing multiple projects. Yeah. Um, so less bash would be ideal. So using everything in one project is my lazy thing. But I think as long as it's like another template, it's fine. I don't. I don't care if it's. It's. It'd probably be a small n, but I feel like for each sort of major reporting purpose, we could do a project to do the. the oh. Also, I think, Jeff, I'm going to introduce another complexity. I misspoke or got it wrong before. Uh, I think I said you can share at the project level. You can share at the data set level, exactly. and a data a project can have multiple data sets, and a data set can have multiple tables and multiple views. Yes. That is correct. Um, but anybody running a query against any of those data sets could use any project they want to to build a compute that they're using. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'll come up with a proposal and I will uh, ping Kate and her. Uh, yeah, I mean, just like I, concretely, I think you were saying you only want to share it with specific groups of individuals for now. Like, yeah. and I think we can just do that almost today in BigQuery. Uh, like if we, if we say the data is safe, uh, we can like just add that group to the reader's permission. Correct. Uh, I feel like the place I want to start is either myself or my teammate will contact you, Justin, to see if we can get the ball rolling again on like getting the data sources in the, the building report um, community editable. Because I think you still have to be google.com to edit the data. Don't be wrong. Uh, but just sort of sort out the permissions on that and so you can use that as the model for hey, we know where the billing for generating the report is going to. Hey, we know what group, what we manage, we have to be in to get Is your hand still up? Okay. Um, you, you, Aaron, just, you, you've said that in the past we got some, some Grafana thing for that and the Grafana got a lot of vulnerabilities, right? Yes. I was I was wondering if this isn't something that we can like send to well, we lost him. <laughs> we can send this like to Grafana Cloud folks because they provide some free account and see like if having these as a software as a service and letting this as their problem and just connecting our Grafana Cloud like our Grafana dash. Our Grafana instance into a into a, a BigQuery wouldn't be something. You know that, what I mean? Like letting letting this, sure. this administration to them, asking to CNCF if if Grafana, as they are a member, wants to provide this as an account for us, and maybe having this like only a dashboard that connects to the to the BigQuery and another dashboard that can connect to the GitHub issue, so right, folks right. can also yeah go ahead. Uh, I don't know. That sounds like a possibility to me. My personal inclination or opinion is I'd rather like make sure that we are not uh, specifically tied to a service. Uh, that like we can, uh, although some of the stuff is like Google specific implementations of IAM and stuff, a lot of our infrastructure we could pick up and put down on any Kubernetes cluster uh, anywhere. Um, but that's that's a totally fair possibility. Uh, maybe you could open an issue about that, and we could chat with the steering committee about putting in a request to the CNCF to get funding for this sort of thing. Sure. Um, I, but I also I, still like, yeah, I also still kind of want to check in with Mark because I feel like he did some work with uh, Grafana for a monitoring thing for us. I don't know. Yeah. On the other hand, I think that's uh, that's not too good for us like to spread our our all of our resources into a lot of projects and a lot of a lot of like 
things in Google Cloud and things in in Crossplane and things in in Grafana Cloud. But I, I guess it's a, a possibility. Like we can take a look into the Grafana Cloud that provides like free account just to, to make some tests. Yeah. See if this yeah if this fits our suits or not. I want to go where the people are, and so like many of the people who are familiar with how to run this infrastructure are Googlers. Uh, so that's part of why we feel comfortable using Google based services. But if people who are more comfortable with other things show up, uh, we can find ways to shift to like their level of comfort. So if like a whole bunch of people who are super familiar with Terraform show up, maybe we can finally rewrite all our batch or if a whole bunch of people who are great with cross plane show up. I would love to use anything but bash. Um, I just don't have the time or bandwidth to rewrite it all. Um, Got it. Yeah, no problem. Just like that. We can we can keep this as a, a possibility in the future, yeah. Um, okay, I'm gonna skip over the audit job thing on the agenda. As far as I know, uh, Hippie Hacker has somebody from his team working on it. I'm gonna go poke them today. Uh, to ask what I can do to unblock them. Um, uh, the next thing I, I should have just kept sharing my screen. Uh, okay, I think uh, ingress instances should use a network in Kate's IO group instead of extensions v1 beta one. Uh, I went and checked and they're all still using extensions v1 beta one. Um, so I'm <clears throat> maybe like, again, if I have the time, I'm happy to sit down and just like blast through this with somebody, perhaps Arnaud, who has a little more experience managing the AAA cluster. Uh, but this kind of made me realize that if I think about the model where like, hey, there are a bunch of sub projects that all own their infrastructure, we just run the cluster for them. I don't have a quick and consistent way to know how to blast out to all the app owners, hey, your ingress is out of date. You've got to update it by this date. Um, Cause I don't, I don't feel like it's appropriate for us to end up in the situation where we do all of the work for all of the individual sub project uh, app owners. Um, what, what is our cluster version? It's V116? Uh, I believe it is, yes. Okay. So I guess we, we are still good because the, the ingress object isn't uh, deprecated yet. But it, I'm I surprised guess, that it's still working in 116. I'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I this in this case specifically, I, I have some some experience with that because I have like a, a program that fetches all deprecated things from a, a version and 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 triggers an alert. So I can I, I, I can see if how, how this fits into that because mainly I, I download the swagger JSON and and compares to manifests from 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 like from the cluster. So we can we can trigger an alert, but the problem is that again who owns that each each object, right? The same problem from the certificate object. Because we need to know who, who we need to alert. Otherwise we are going to like to to have to to update that, right? Right. Uh so I think it's doable. Like, um, I think probably what I would do as a human being is I'd kind of read the directory names and then I'd go look for similarly named groups. Uh, and those will send out to email addresses of people who are owners for the stuff. Uh, so I think we can get it done. Uh, I think maybe what I'm going to do is create an issue to see if people have suggestions on how to more tightly tie like the GitHub groups that we manage the email addresses that are in them and the GitHub usernames that would show up in the owner's files that kind of represent ownership of these apps. Because I'd like to, in the future, as we need to change things like this for all the apps, find a way to consistently just blast this out and assign it to all the people to do the things. Like it's really easy for me to do this if I need like every single sub project to change something in their Git repos. I know who the repo owners are. So it's super easy. Um, okay, I can I can I can try to run my I, I've sent to you like just just a, a, a okay. I can try I, I can try to run I can try to run my program against the, the the repo and check like in version one twenty what what do we have 
as a obsolete manifest declaration and we can raise an issue. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I wanted to talk about this because I thought uh, extensions was dropped in 116. Maybe I'm wrong, but the cluster is at 116 right now. And then I would like to march us forward if at all possible for other things, but I've got follow up issues for that. I, I will assign that to me and uh, hold on. I will assign that to me and, and we'll share it out. Yeah, so I can I can take a look in. Yeah, you you are faster than me. Eric. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, and I, I have a, I, I I have will, a question about this issue. Okay. Uh, so can we just upgrade the the object and just inform the people we have upgraded the project because I feel like most of the people owner of those workloads don't really care about uh, what's happening in the cluster. Yeah. We never we never inform about um, basically the upgrade of Trooper A. So I'm not sure because uh, we're gonna we're gonna ping. We need to ping the owners and wait the owners doing the upgrade by themselves. But we don't know totally, when. Like I totally share that thing. But at the same time, I don't think it's fair for me to know the ins and outs of. Artifact server, GCS web, Kate's IO, node perp dash, perp dash, Slack in for and triage party to be able to check that all of those apps are functioning appropriately. Like I need, I need those folks to say, yeah, it still works. So I think you're right. We could, we could just change it all and then say, hey, we changed everything. If your app is broken, please contact us. But in general, that's not a, it's not a great supportability model because then I feel like people start to notice every little uh, misbehavior, whether it was there or not, and attribute it to the fact that you said something. Um, what are, this is just my sick testing experience coming out. Uh, we, we, we can do the same way that folks from, from CAPS did, right? We can, we can open a, 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 an issue and like send to Kubernetes dev mailing list with a lazy consensus time. Right, we are going to migrate this date, and if you have any problem with that, please reach us. Yeah, because uh, like I, I have like some experience with that. Like if, if we wait for the users, they are not going to. This is going to to be like into low priority for them until we migrate and something breaks. So right. it's better at least that we say we are going to migrate this. Okay. If, if this sounds good, we can like send. Okay, this is an issue. We we are raising everything here and. We are migrating this in 15 days. And if you think it, you, we can't migrate that, please reach us. Maybe. Justin. Uh, what we would do if it was like super production, we would have like a staging instance, right? And we would do the staging one first and expect them to, to make that change. I, I do see some canaries. I don't know whether that is a staging instance or not, but like, we could probably suggest to important things that they consider having a, a staging instance and doing that. I imagine like someone like Triage Party will say, we don't care, it's not important, right? Like we'll just we'll just roll it back. Whereas I think someone like uh who should I pick on? Like GCS Web might say actually we want to have a staging instance. Yeah. It's fair. I think this just reveals like as we start to scale out, things like the number of apps we own we should actually figure out a policy that works for us. Because right now, like, we'll just work it out as human beings. Um, the canary things are for the canary DNS zones. So it's still important that those run, because I think that's where we check that the DNS updates work before we roll them out to the non-canary DNS zones. If you're looking at the word canary on the screen. Um, Ricardo, I agree with you that I think just that it's the lazy consensus way of the project. This thing is going to happen by this date. Please let us know if you have objections. The, the thing in the middle is like, I would rather reach the responsible individuals for this stuff more directly, either as GitHub users or via their email addresses. Uh, it's probably bad that I admit this in public, but like the way I deal with the 
amazing volume of email that I get at Google is stuff that doesn't have me in the two line. It's probably not going to get read. Yeah, my email seems like a log streaming also. Like I can't even read them. I say that my, my email can be like a blockchain. You need to send me three times so I can read that. First time I will just drop and say, okay. So, so yeah, sounds good. I think that we can we, we, we can probably ping folks in the issue or maybe the PR and say, we are going to merge this this time. Please reach us if you think it's not uh, applicable and, and mark each of the of the owners. Yeah, so I'm, I'm okay. Okay. I just wanted to be respectful of time. I'm not going to talk about dlkates.io. Uh, I'm going to rename the default branch for the kates.io repo from master to main. Um, I'm going to do that today, probably. Uh, I did it for the Kubernetes org repo on Friday, and it wasn't super disruptive. I'm using this repo because it's low traffic, and it has a couple jobs that are periodics and post submits and pre submits that all uh, trigger against the default branch. Uh, so I'm trying to exercise the behavior of our CI system when that branch renames and finding out ways to do this without too much breakage. Um, okay, I wanted to get give Justin time to talk about ways to move forward on the AWS accounts PR. Uh, I, we can probably talk about it next time. I just like there was a lot of there was a lot of feedback. Uh, excellent feedback. Uh, it sort of felt like maybe we want to just pursue a different approach entirely. I don't. I don't know. Like, it felt like um, like do we want to build do we want to build it again in a sort of collaborative <clears throat> like a pairing way so we have like two eyes on everything and do we want to try to use like I uh, what's that thing called uh, Open ID OIDC instead of using like secrets and like all these sorts of like it felt like there was a lot here uh okay that's fair um yeah i think it would be fair to collaborate on a better path forward i think part of it is i have tried to go around to most of our stuff and align us on the use of secret manager if there's something better we should be using instead of secret manager let's do that um the terraform version thing is just the unfortunate consequence of where our Terraform is at. But bottom line, like, I think there's a sub project that's waiting on these extra AWS accounts and I want to unblock them. Um, so, I mean, it could be like, if this is what's there today, it's fine. Maybe we merge it with the big scary note that's like, hey, this is how these were generated, but we're not actually using this. Because it's unclear to me whether you use this Terraform to generate these accounts and create that file and get it in place, or whether that's the you manually you have manually generated them someplace else and that's how the file was created. No, it's it's it, it was uh, this Terraform was was used, but it was run well. It's always going to run manually, but uh, it was run uh, manually um, to to do it. It's not like it was back backfilled. Okay. Um, one of the one of the I like that approach a lot, and I can clean it up with an eye to that. One of the nice things that I envisage uh, for these accounts is we would rotate them, so like they all have a date in them, and like every pick a number of months, like three months, let's say, we would just like create ten new ones or a hundred new ones, and then like delete the one from six months ago, like sort of thing, like um, you know that sort of yeah. thing, or even from three months ago, once they, once they go into bus costs, they're not going to be used within, within an hour, they're all going to be like unused. Yeah. Yeah, that would be, that would be awesome. Uh, you know, there are ways you can teach, <clears throat> Boscos has the concept of dynamic resources. So it could be possible if we had the right credentials, we could teach Boscos to go and create accounts dynamically. Uh, that might be a little freaky, uh, but you know, we can also like, Secret manager is there for secret rotation. You could, we could probably set up syncing between secret manager and cluster secrets that Moscow's manages. Um, and like whenever the version changes in secret manager, it, it syncs over. Anyway, yeah, rotation, good. We should be doing that for uh, many more things. Uh, but yeah, my TLDR is like, I don't want people to be blocked. Uh, so I just didn't have the credentials to run 
everything in its current form and verify that it all works as advertised. Um, so like a maybe a separate follow up thing is we should get the rest of the Kate's infra organizers access to whatever AWS credentials we need to do this. Um, but if you if you're like yeah it's all good I trust you big scary thing that says this is how this was done but we're gonna do something else i think you might have access to the aws account anyway so i can i can double check but i will okay. i will not great wasn't that maybe i didn't go check that like it's, in, it's individuals it's a different aws account it doesn't work like uh like google or you have to like use a different credential set it's not like your your gmail like works for them yes yeah. yeah yeah no i i am aware of that yeah right um okay but cool. all right i can probably yeah if we if we go for something like that i can sort of clean it up with that view and then we can like try to like uh make it better for the next uh rotation like great rotation yeah um okay yeah uh, the thing is like uh, man if i have time i'll try and see if all the other terraform versions can upgrade to 0 013 and we don't have to like muck all the other cluster terraform databases terraform is really messed up there like 0 012 0 013 and 0 014 all have like massive breaking changes i am very like we should have got we should have gone with go i'm going to keep telling tim that <laughs> There right. is another one that uses like language, right? I can't remember the name, but I can send you the that's a uses like programming language, Node.js or something like that. Better than Terraform things because yeah, that's a mess for for this part of modules and upgrading from 13 to 14. That's a, yeah. I'm having this pain right now. Okay. Uh we're over our time. It was so great to see you all. I hope you have a happy Wednesday. Um I look forward to doing awesome things with you all over the next two weeks and seeing you two weeks from now. See you folks. Happy Wednesday. <laughs>